the first episode of Master Podcast with Brick and Bolt. In this series, we are going to chat with industry experts and change makers who have disrupted certain spaces. And let's start with our own industry and our own change maker, Sumit Chaudhary, the VP of Operations at Brick and Bolt. He has had an exceptional career with 20 plus years of experience in architecture and construction industry. And right now, he's the VP of Operations at Brick and Bolt. That means overseeing almost uh, hundreds of projects uh, in 10 plus cities all around India. So how is that working out for you? Hey, hi Kafila and hi everyone. It's worked out very well for me so far. I've spent three years here and okay. it's been a rocking journey. So um, I remember the first time I saw it. It was my first day at Brick and Bolt. I came down here. <laughs> I was waiting for the lift and you came in. And you were like, after you. And I was like, wow, such a gentleman. And also, there are two Sumits at Brick and Bolt. And uh, whenever somebody mentions Sumit, I always ask them, which one? And always they say, the chill dude. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so people would... <laughs> Maybe you are. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Tell me. So, um, my question is, after spending 20 plus years uh, in a space like construction, people would expect uh, for it to toughen you up, right? but you still manage to be so relaxed and calm and cool and chill. How do you manage that? <laughs> See, a lot of this comes from, uh, you know, working in a startup where I have to work with 20 something all over the place. So, okay. uh, you know, looking like a brooding uh, senior citizen with white hair, as you can see. No. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't help much. You can much. color it. <laughs> doesn't help much, doesn't help much at all. Uh, but also, you know, see, at heart, you need to be young. All, all, all okay. Time, so. So it's your heart you're saying, yeah. not genes. It's a young heart. <laughs> oh, good for you and good for us since you're managing us. Um, what sort of a child were you? So I hail from a place called Nainital. That's a okay. hill station in Uttarakhand. Yeah, we have studied so, in textbooks. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another tourist place. Yeah. yeah, so I was a local, so uh, okay. very different to a tourist there. So, you know, I... Uh, always had nature to surround me. We didn't have to travel five kilometers in a car to find the first tree in a park. Mm -hmm. So we were surrounded by nature all the time. So right. I mean that also affected how I grew up in the end and okay. you know, how I thought, how I do things. As you know, in, you are a creative like person because of the influence a of nature. A lot comes from there, you know, because okay. uh, uh, see, I, I studied in a school that was the building was built in 1888. So it's a, it's wow. an Irish brother school in uh, Nanita called uh, Saint Joseph's hmm. uh, Nanita. So okay. you know. Uh, and it's a very beautiful uh, building and very, very uh, large uh, spaces, etc. And you know, growing up in a place like that shapes you in a, in a slightly different way. And that's why it was a boarding school and people from all over the place would come and study okay. there. Right? Shape so, you in a different way as in? in a good? Uh, hopefully good. <laughs> <laughs> the, the world has to tell Yeah, that. you turn out well, so probably good. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's out there for the judgment. but. Uh, yeah, you know, having beautiful, uh, growing up with nature, with beauty, with uh, uh, very, very good teachers, mm -hmm. you know, teachers who were not teaching you to make you something. Okay. Teachers who were mm -hmm. seeking what you could become, you okay. know, rather than, oh, uh, which, is, which is very different uh, mm -hmm. from very busy cities. If you're, if you're studying in uh, very busy cities, people would be, you know, teaching you to become an engineer yeah. or something. Right? So but you asked, became an engineer. I, I mean, an architect. Which, which is a little bit of a reverse because. Okay. <laughs> so no, no. The fact remains that you will become what you will become. So it, you don't have to yeah. start training uh, people to become what they should Something, become yeah. too early in the in the system. All so right. you know, initially, you should be all learn and grow and see and watch and observe. And so become, were you so a right. very studious child or a creative <laughs> child? No, so my friends would say I was a very studious child. I never okay. felt like that because mm -hmm. I was probably reading comics when they were not okay. <laughs> so, but uh, you know uh, I, I was the last guy to be selected in a cricket in team oh, okay. <laughs> because I used to play really bad. Were you sad? <laughs> I was sad. No, so I used to like individual sports like you know, right. running and uh, swimming and stuff like that. Okay. So not, not too much into group not sports. Bad. Time, yeah. All right. so, so I was not uh, very very uh, you know, sporting and all that in mm -hmm. the beginning. Which I picked up in my 30s. Oh, <laughs> you did? Which we will come to later. Oh, okay. So, 
yeah so, so it was very nice growing up in a in a place uh, like uttarakhand okay. and i'm bengali so hmm. you know growing up uh, in a culture that is not uh, you're not surrounded by people of your own culture all the time okay. so uh, it helped me have a very diverse outlook on uh, life on on life and customs and traditions okay. and people you know, you're so open to everything yeah, and yeah, everything yeah i got married to a south indian after coming here so, oh, 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 so all everything right. <laughs> everything is full of diverse diverse palette very, very diverse. <laughs> as a creative child as a free child how did you end up in iit <laughs> <laughs> it's an indian parents yeah, dream yeah, right yeah, yeah. so uh, it's it's a little funny so now if you see there are the avenues that a child can pursue and uh, you know what they can become hmm. is not so constrained and i'm talking about the 1990s so i i maybe okay. I passed out of college uh, of school in the 1990s mm-hmm. so at that time uh, even in small towns all you could become was one of two things either a doctor or an engineer so, <laughs> so obviously i was also in a in a similar uh, situation but the good part was that uh, i used to love to draw and yeah. you know you know uh, the nature everything, nature and everything. Mm-hmm. so that uh, Uh, help me to write the architecture entrance exam as well all right uh, apart from the regular uh, iit ge uh-huh. so you know that's an aptitude test that they take separately mm-hmm. so uh, obviously i didn't get through any engineering and i got through architecture so that could be one reason why i got oh. <laughs> but all said and i did not regret it at all because i i uh, the art and uh, you know science mm-hmm. being learned together in in uh, an environment and you could apply both of it also in mm-hmm. your career later so that turned out uh, very well and you would say the iit experience actually helped you yeah it does because the iit is uh, uh, see all colleges teach mm-hmm. uh, things that, and many of them teach nicely mm-hmm. it's not that an iit is, is a place where good education is mm-hmm. happening I, alone hmm. right but uh, iits mein what happens that uh, the general people who have uh, come to study there mm-hmm. they all are very good and, okay <laughs> and uh, you know at least academic because you have to study. crack the exam yeah, yeah because okay. passing that entrance test is oh. not uh, simple it's, yeah. it's, 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 there are more people on earth who haven't passed the test than who have so <laughs> so what happens is that uh, so so the uh, your uh, play field hmm. is, uh, is is very uh, the standard of your play field is very different oh yeah so although once you go there hmm. uh, it's it's not like everyone is studying all hmm. the time uh, it is it's not unlikely true. that anyone is studying any of the time so oh really <laughs> so <laughs> that's not a picture and, we have no, no, and especially especially architecture what happens is that hmm. architecture you don't need to mug up too many things it's okay. it's like there are design courses uh-huh. uh, etc so so we used to have a design exam that used to last over 3 days okay so you would go take home spend, exam uh, not even home i mean oh. you, you design something leave it there okay. continue it the next day or the next day all so right. so before exams all the architecture students are chilling and everyone else is you know studying hard uh-huh. so uh, so we spread a lot of jealousy in that process as well. oh okay <laughs> you are the marketing team of your college yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, apart from that architecture you know Um, Rurki, IIT Rurki especially, mm-hmm. the civil engineering uh, stream is very, very, very good. It's very well, well oh. established. All It right. is very well renowned. Mm-hmm. And there is uh, Central Building Research Institute. Uh, uh, it's a CSIR institute that is also okay. located in uh, Rurki. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, you know, it has a history. Again, this school, this college also started in 1847. My school started in 1888. This one. What is with you and the dates? Around since 1847. <laughs> So a lot of history of uh, good education uh, was there in in uh, in uh, every every aspect of mm-hmm. of uh, what we were studying. Okay. So it was nice and uh, I mean I don't even remember too much studying etc there okay. what we remember is the associations we make. So right. you know we used to be part of magazines and mm-hmm. we used to be part of various uh, mm-hmm. uh, extra curricular co-curricular groups and uh, you know that exposed us to a lot of uh, new ideas mm-hmm. and, and and especially working with uh, people from electrical engineering computer science engineering and all of them staying mm-hmm. at a residential campus uh, which is also a very very beautiful campus okay so you know studying together that adds a lot of uh, dimensions to your uh, growing up okay. yeah. all right so i feel like now i got answer to my first question why are you so chill <laughs> <laughs> because your past experience your childhood uh, your college Hence, you are chill. <laughs> I was going through your profile, 
and I found a very interesting thing. You worked with one company for 17 plus years and people like us, we are struggling to stay in one company for two plus years. What's the art of you know, actually doing it. How could you do that? Good, 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 good. I mean, uh, having stayed somewhere for 17 years is a common question that I have to answer to mm -hmm. everyone. So I'm very well prepared for it. Oh, all right. Good <laughs> so, for me. <laughs> so, uh, so, lots of things actually. So, uh, you would be surprised to know that this was a campus recruitment. So, oh. I, I was in Roorkee in my final year uh, of architecture. Okay. So, I was picked up from campus mm -hmm. over there and uh, Bangalore. Okay. Uh, we came to Bangalore. Two of us got picked up uh, mm -hmm. from that batch. And uh, first of all, you know, getting hired into uh, one of the best design uh, firms uh, overall, like okay. really, really good mm -hmm. uh, design company and a developer, mm -hmm. uh, was a, it's a, in itself a very good boost for us in our uh, very early days uh, of yeah. our career. You know, the projects that uh, Total Environment was had done uh, the till then. It was an eight-year-old company when mm -hmm. I joined and uh, when I left it was a 25-year-old company. So, uh, you know, it was very good to be part of the building okay. of the organization in a, in a, in a, a mm -hmm. uh, whatever capacity we engage there. Okay. And it, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a design organization. So, okay. everything stems from design. Mm -hmm. The customer, yeah. the, the, uh, you the, know, the customer's interest, the, the interest of the customer, his his budget, his taste, mm -hmm. his day-to-day uh, -day activity. So all of that uh, come together to design the spaces in which mm -hmm. he is going to live. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very residential, uh, okay. uh, you know, projects mm -hmm. uh, kind of organization. So where mm -hmm. the home is is what a we dream. build. The homes, what we are building. The experiences mm -hmm. around homes that we were building. So uh, and the great part was that I had three jobs there in various parts of my career. So it was oh, not really? One thing that I was doing. Okay. So I started off as an architect, okay. uh, and uh, spent five six years mm -hmm. as an architect, and then I built. Uh, I mean, helped build a software for them as a as a product uh, manager sort of. Oh, GM so, of tech uh, tech and systems. I <laughs> saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah. I was called uh, AVP and GM oh, technology right. and systems. So, uh, so total environment is into heavily customized homes, even okay. in the high density, high rise format. Mm -hmm. You know, even 20 floor building with uh, 300 homes, all of them will be customized. All of them will have different uh, okay. drawings. Mm -hmm. So, to pick up the inputs from uh, customers and uh, organize them and then release it to the project site and have it constructed mm -hmm. uh, for so many different people within a project is okay. not easy. I mean, manually oh, it is yeah. next to impossible. Mm -hmm. So, I was very fortunate to be part of the team uh, mm -hmm. that was building this software to okay. manage uh, online customization mm -hmm. for high rise high density. Mm -hmm. So uh, I spent six, seven years doing that and okay. then I was CEO projects for yeah. uh, uh, almost uh, seven years uh, till I moved out from there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, you know, building out uh, large scale projects. So, mm -hmm. all of South Bangalore, mm -hmm. geography, whatever large projects were going on. Mm -hmm. So, I was fortunate to be mm -hmm. part of, you know, spearheading the entire uh, business and the construction of such mm -hmm. projects. So, one reason why I probably stuck around was these variety of variety things that of things, uh, huh? that organization mm -hmm. uh, gave me an opportunity to engage in. So, yeah. I, so basically, I, it was not a monotonous. It was not the same thing that yeah. I was doing for. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if it, even if it was the same thing, I'm not. Sure if I would have been there or not would have been there. All right. Uh, maybe I still would have been there mm -hmm. because you know they are a very very good design firm. Okay. So they, uh, any architect's uh, dream uh, organization. So, so yeah. uh, if I have to choose the essence of the entire thing you just said, do multiple things. Would you say that? It is not that. See, you can do the same thing in multiple ways. You can you can improvise mm. your work yeah. as you go along. You, mm. know, you don't have to do different things every day. Okay. Because see, the opportunity of variety in the most mundane of tasks is mm. also immense. It's it's just uh, how oh, you yeah. notice. It's, it's not about seeing something. It's about noticing something. You know? mm -hmm. That is what yeah. builds that difference between how interesting something is and how boring something is. All so right. even people who are cutting grass can make their life very interesting by doing it in Cut different, it in different, different ways. ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so coming back to the same thread of you know uh, doing different things etc. So what happens in uh, fields like construction, mm -hmm. uh, one word that matters a lot is rigor. You know, okay. it is uh, 
whether you are going to get good construction or bad construction mm-hmm. depends on how you have done every step as it has come to you yeah right so what happens is that you have to put your best effort in every one of these little steps okay. and at the end the product that you get will be fine if you skip any one of those steps you are not going to get the, the construction your that, you, that you desire right okay. so uh, so so rigor mm-hmm. versus boredom Okay. So this is something that uh, at least a construction professional definitely needs to understand. Okay. This is this is like an army, you know, that uh, you have to go and repeat the same steps thousand times, ten thousand times, hundred thousand times if required. But, But wouldn't it do be boring? Do each of them. Do each of them with diligence, right? So uh, now, now, how to keep it not being boring? That that is something how that you might want to. How to cut the grass differently? How, uh, how, how to cut the grass differently? <laughs> so there, what happens? First of all, understand what you're doing. Hmm. like you know if if you're waterproofing hmm. there are certain things that you have to do you have to clean you have to fill you have to check you hmm. have to do something hmm. all these steps are uh, adding value to the end product that is going to come okay so you know having no matter at what level you have engaged mm-hmm. with uh, your your construction mm-hmm. uh, you could be a supervisor or just a laborer or a supervisor or a, or a head of construction of mm-hmm. any firm it is this rigor at the end of the day that will give you uh, you know the, the desired outcome mm-hmm. so, so so doing good work doesn't always mean doing multiple things and jumping from one to the other many okay. times it means doing every step of the job nicely mm-hmm. you know, so so you have that, to uh, ultimately sharpen your skills you at every point sharpen, yeah you have to sharpen yeah. your skills and you have to find your uh, you know uh, pleasure in each one of those steps okay. and and not look for general pleasure in okay your you have had a pretty interesting career and i'm sure that you would have done pretty interesting projects also would you want to share insights about a few of them certainly certainly one of So uh, uh, it's it's very uh, again interesting in some sense that you know when uh, I came and joined this uh, company Total Environment mm-hmm. uh, straight out of college. Mm-hmm. So the first project that I engaged in is mm-hmm. something that is a you know, very memorable experience for okay. me. So uh, it was a very very different kind of project. Uh, okay. How it was different because it was in the middle of uh, the city. Okay. And there were uh, middle of Bangalore. Middle of Bangalore. Oh, yeah. okay. Very it, it is behind uh, the hundred. Feet road in Rana. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's right there. Mm-hmm. So, so there were ten okay. different sites, okay. one after the other, uh-huh. uh, of forty uh, feet by sixty feet. Okay. Ten sites. Okay. That was the project. That was the project site. Okay. So you imagine there is a very linear uh, strip of uh-huh. land in which you have to build uh, an apartment complex. Okay. So mm. uh, th- that is a very interesting and difficult problem to solve because you will usually find uh, sites mm, yeah, which are not so constrained in their yeah. uh, dimensions. So uh, the design was also done very nicely mm-hmm. for that, and uh, you did the design. No, I was part of the team. Obviously, okay. I had just joined as a mm-hmm. junior architect. Okay. And, uh, uh, So it was very interesting to see how a, a land parcel like that can mm-hmm. be put to uh, interesting use. Okay. So the way that project was designed was, you know, uh, the homes were all open on both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so that uh, because it was a thinner strip of land, the homes okay. so which added the value to the okay. home because you know there was good cross ventilation, mm-hmm. etc. And uh, the terrace gardens, so, so total environment is okay. not to have a lot of terrace gardens in mm-hmm. the buildings. So these terrace gardens were inside the window. I mean, your home and then the terrace garden, oh, okay. right after mm-hmm. it. So you know you don't have to open a door or a window to uh, right. get to mm-hmm. a garden like that. So it was very very interesting to work, and uh, uh, as fate would have it, that project was featured in uh, you know A Plus D magazine, and oh, in my okay. first few months of uh, working somewhere, I was on a magazine. Oh so, my so, god! So, huh? Those things. So these are some uh-huh. small initial uh, recognition. I, I don't know if it's recognition, uh-huh. like initial uh, you know yeah. boosting, okay. ego boosting. <laughs> So, so, uh, so all the all the projects that uh, I have done since then mm-hmm. have been uh, very interesting and uh, uh, very very interesting was uh, this I was telling about the you know customization so uh, okay. that is a software development project oh, yeah. right mm-hmm. so it is it is uh, uh, 
an amazing experience to try mm-hmm. to define interior design mm-hmm. in certain tangible steps okay and you know putting it in a workflow in a software so that people anywhere in the world can customize their homes themselves they don't need assistance. tangible steps such as tangible steps such as, you know so what is so so you would ask yourself questions like what is a house mm-hmm. uh, what is a oh okay so so where do you live in a house where do you uh-huh, live uh-huh. you live in the spaces that get created mm-hmm. by the walls so generally we think yeah. the house is the walls but yeah. actually where you live is the spaces that are left after doing the work okay between the walls between the walls so okay. you know so you ask yourself such questions which you would probably never have yeah. uh, you know experience these spaces you redefine the concept level. or it's you live through this just, just concept uh, you know understanding just mm. you know what is a home yeah. what is a space what is a room mm. what is one room and an adjacent room uh-huh. so you know you, you start asking yourself uh, questions, questions like that. Okay. Where, where you break down the whole interior design mm-hmm. problem into much smaller steps okay. and try to create workflows mm-hmm. around it so you know uh, that was also very interesting for you all those like i said like you have to uh, i mean most of the things that one does are interesting mm-hmm. it's it's just how you feel about it <laughs> all right so and then uh, after coming here ha huh. uh, You so know, since you had that tech experience oh, uh, so i was always you, inclined yeah. towards the technology mm-hmm. side and and, right. you know, and having been surrounded by you know students from mm-hmm. all sorts of uh, background yeah. like you know, mm-hmm. mechanical engineers mm-hmm. and electrical engineers and computer science engineers so we uh, in our usual conversations also used to pick up uh, uh, tidbits here and there so okay so yeah so uh, doing softwares doing these uh, mm. interesting home buildings mm. and here when you know you you suddenly get exposed to uh, like right now mm. uh, at least like 700 buildings oh, yeah. uh, running either completed or mm. running parallel and 250 260 mm. buildings in conversation so here it is about all about scale the interesting okay. project is about mm. managing and delivering scale so it was actually a gradual uh, career yeah, moment yeah. right yeah. from so, uh digitalizing but uh, yeah. then digitalizing then actually delivering yeah. at, a, at a very very big scale hmm. why brick and mortar <laughs> very good question very good <laughs> so as as you've seen like 17 years in one organization why would somebody make a move and join you know a, a fancy startup uh, mm-hmm. in, the, yeah. in the construction space so, uh, so so just just think about the numbers you know uh, mm-hmm. like if you see 13% of uh, india's gdp is contributed by uh, the construction, construction industry so the scale of operation in the construction industry now if you see in uh, 2025 mm-hmm. uh, this industry would be about 544 billion dollars okay in india mm-hmm. you know and uh, if you see uh, uh, like the, how many homes you know are mm-hmm. required in this country so so in 2020 there were about 7.5 million homes required in this country okay. and out of that mm-hmm. 6.3 million homes mm-hmm. were in the unorganized sector okay so now you see the kind of opportunity lurking out there for someone to capitalize mm-hmm. and jayesh who who happens to be my <laughs> batchmate from iit roorkee yeah. he was studying civil engineering when i was studying mm-hmm. architecture so he had uh, you know recognized this potential of this industry and uh, set up uh, mm-hmm. uh, brick and board and uh, as i got uh, uh, you know engaged with certain discussions around this so i was really fascinated with how much there is to do and mm-hmm. what kind of scope School, and huh? uh, you know abilities that you will need to nurture to cater to that kind of scope mm-hmm. and uh, so you know uh, when 6.3 million homes in the unorganized sector and, mm-hmm. and brick and mortar caters to the unorganized sector mm-hmm. which is which is non developer mm-hmm. uh, project so 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 the amount of scope that was available to capitalize was insane so okay. you know uh, it, you wanted it was to the organize the unorganized yeah, so <laughs> jayesh was already doing that uh-huh, okay. and for me it was a, a very good opportunity to you know contribute and hmm. uh, resonate to make a change. resonate hmm. uh, I, i resonated very well with the hmm. idea and this kind of scale if you want to operate in and this kind of you know chaotic unorganized uh, sector if you want to mm-hmm. operate in the only way you can do this is through technology All right, you and know, that's going to be process. my next question. <laughs> <laughs> systems and process and technology—that is what will uh, you know enable you to to deliver that. So, since we are digitalizing uh, the construction space, could you tell me about uh, the trends that are going on in the construction space and something you are really fascinated by? Yeah, yeah. So, see, the construction industry is not a new industry. It's been mm-hmm. around. 
since the Romans and the Greeks mm. and you know very very ancient times. Yeah. So uh, while uh, the construction methods and construction technology and all that of some nature has always been mm-hmm. but now uh, with with the opportunity first of all the demand on the construction industry being so huge uh-huh. second the opportunities in the construction industry being so huge mm-hmm. it is imperative for any construction organization that wants to deliver mm-hmm. at scale to adopt technology so one of the major technologies that uh, uh, you know is is uh, required and is being adopted extensively is you know digitiza- digitization of everything mm-hmm. you know whether the there are some companies that are kind of digitizing the land records like in india okay. it's very difficult to find out anything about land mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if if somebody wants to okay. build uh, anything mm-hmm. so digitizing that and then okay. trying to digitize the infrastructure that mm-hmm. is laid in uh, in uh, in your road sides or or through yeah. various uh, uh, you know uh, civil amenities mm-hmm. So once you have that uh, digitized properly, then the construction will plug into it in a seamless manner. Okay. Right now, it's all yeah, you know, discovering as you as yeah. you find it. Right. Then apart from that, there are a lot of uh, good research happening on materials. Okay. Um, you know, Chacha. like uh, materials like you know self healing concrete. Oh yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. you know stuff like that. So yeah. we have we have we are seeing a major trend in people trying to experiment with materials. Like will even it in work? India, of course. Oh, okay. Even in India, if you see a lot of focus on going back to like you know mud based construction okay. and you know stuff like very mm-hmm. vernacular, very natural mm-hmm. systems of construction. aiding the sustainability aspects mm-hmm. that is uh, also catching up in a, mm-hmm. in a big way so apart from these things uh, which are still catching up mm-hmm. like if you see 3d printing yeah. is is a mm-hmm. very interesting uh, real thing now yeah. i mean there yeah. are buildings in bangalore that have been done uh, using 3d printing okay right and you can go and uh, work out of okay. them live in them mm-hmm. it is to that extent a okay. lot of good work is happening in the 3d printing area mm-hmm. and modular construction you know yeah modular uh, yeah. one of my dreams is to you know bring a house in a truck install it in, in a, a couple day? of days and <laughs> work out with okay. everything running uh, hunky dory yeah right so modular construction is is uh, one of the very important thing and the most the biggest and the most important thing being building information modeling okay you know which is yeah. which is there are lots of takers mm-hmm. now in the construction industry okay. for bim mm-hmm. in fact brick and mortar is mm-hmm. is for Fully on it. So we we yeah. do all our projects uh, are in in you know softwares like Revit, mm. which are fully BIM enabled. So mm. you know we take out outputs from the Revit files, feed it into our uh, you know technology systems, mm-hmm. our ERPs, our visualization systems, and you know our customers engage with the digital twins of their yeah. projects mm-hmm. in in their app environment. Yeah. You know so uh, so while construction is happening. Uh, you know, many times kilometers and mm-hmm. kilometers away you have got a live feed on your digital twin on yeah. you know what is the progress mm-hmm. of your construction or what plans uh, uh, you have mm-hmm. in the, in the upcoming mm-hmm. few days or weeks or months yeah. on your construction project so so building information modeling is the next big wave and uh, brick and mortar uh, uh, disrupting this industry, industry as a, as, yeah. a, as a basic mandate hmm. is uh, uh, very much uh, hmm. you know on on this uh, hmm. bim uh, way and that is my next question how hard was it to actually disrupt this industry and i was going through some reports by deloitte and ey and everything they're all saying uh, the pace of adoption is very low yes, uh, yes. would you agree yeah yeah i'm totally agree with that uh, see there are lots of things first of all uh, accessibility uh, to software mm-hmm. now that is slightly easy piece it's, mm-hmm. it's all about you know spending the money to buy those yeah. so then second is uh, enough uh, training mm-hmm. and uh, you know uh, enough training on those software. okay then third thing which is the biggest of all the problems mm-hmm. is coordination between various entities yeah. that mm-hmm. come together to build out Actually a project build. like i'll just give you an example so if if there is a large project that we have to do mm-hmm. so there will be multiple agencies okay. one would be the architecture team yeah. one would be the structural design team mm-hmm. then there will be these mep consultants mm-hmm. and then there will be these fire uh, mm-hmm. service providers then there will be these telecommunication service yeah. providers so all of them will yeah. have their own details yeah. and at the end of the day they all need to come together mm-hmm. to build that building yeah so it is it is a very very complex mm-hmm. job and uh, what is not realized is mm-hmm. that if you do it right 
okay. in a BIM uh, environment, okay. all the clashes that mm-hmm. might come yeah. because of a, you know, a plumbing pipe mm. interacting with a sewage mm. pipe and both of them interacting mm. with an electrical conduit mm. and all three of them interacting yeah. with a fire pipe. Okay. So mm. how all of those things will uh, uh, you know, uh, lay out and how yeah. they will clash with each other mm-hmm. when you that actually go to construction, mm. all of that can be preempted. Yeah. So, so what, what the industry at large is not able to appreciate is that enough investment mm-hmm. of money or time mm-hmm. or training or you know that thought leadership mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning mm-hmm. can save a lot of problems in the end. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it is first of all, so I think uh, at the largest level, I would say there is an intent issue uh, okay. bigger than anything else. Okay. If the intent… We have that resistance. If the intent is right and, and one uh, recognizes mm-hmm. that uh, you know solving everything in an offline environment and mm-hmm. then going to construction with everything sorted yeah. is is a much bigger value add mm. uh, you know than having Actually, 200 sorry. people yeah. monitoring all of these at the project yeah. and preventing these from happening yeah. so uh, so i think what as as construction professionals mm. and uh, as as uh, you know in, in, in a very very growth oriented uh, country mm. like india where you know i, I told you this immense yeah. potential uh, to do uh, construction so in in a country like this it, it is very important for us uh, uh, you know uh, whoever is uh, participating mm. in the construction industry to try to bring this awareness of uh, you know building information modeling and multiple other mm. uh, like 3d printing and all of these mm. to you know ingrain it as a as a natural outcome not as some fancy thing that we okay. want to do because it is, it is not like that it is it, is, it should be very organic it is in some time and yeah. I, I would be very happy to be part of brick and board pioneering this okay. uh, uh, you know bringing that along change. with the team to bring that change in the market all right you know uh, where people don't think of let's do something and let's also do BIM. Okay. It should be like let's do BIM. Yeah. Because you know that is what is going to uh, see in construction. Everyone knows that, and mm. you know, anyone who's watching or hearing me will know that. And doing things right the first time. Yeah. Anything you redo hmm. is first of all going cost, to cost you money, yeah. cost you time, and will never be as That's good it. a quality yeah. as uh, you know it would have been done if it was done right the first time. Okay. So BIM and all these uh, technologies that we're talking mm-hmm. about enable you to do things right the first time. And in the end coming to the you know uh, the most uh, uh, exciting trend Trends. that you would have heard everywhere in the world about you know artificial intelligence of and course. machine learning and stuff like that. Yeah AI so is trending. AI and ML. Mm-hmm. So you know uh, see uh, if you if you want to handle scale and mm-hmm. if you want to you know, build something out by certain standard practices. Mm-hmm. What we need to understand is that uh, how we use the data that we have got okay. to tell us mm-hmm. about what our next step should be. Okay. Right? Insights. Yeah. yeah. So if you now see uh, uh, brick and mortar mm-hmm. in <coughs> all these years, we have done about uh, I would say seven and a half lakh quality checks. Okay. Right. And in those seven and a half lakh quality checks, we would have amassed a wealth of about four and a half to five lakh uh, images okay you know so mm-hmm. those four and a half to five lakh images mm-hmm. each mm-hmm. showing an aspect mm-hmm. of construction okay. with a marking okay. that whether it is good or, or bad, bad whether it is pass mm-hmm. or fail with this kind of rich data available with us mm-hmm. and every day this data amassing yeah it is not difficult to train Mm-hmm. Uh, an AI system yeah, yeah. or an ML system mm-hmm. to start recognizing these patterns. patterns huh. So these patterns, like you know, uh, whether hacking has been done in columns or not, mm-hmm. a good picture looks like this, mm-hmm. a bad picture looks like okay. this, the next good picture looks like mm-hmm. this, the next bad picture looks like this. So if you keep you know, feeding mm-hmm. this data into the system with all these mm-hmm. parameters and these marking, mm-hmm. it will not be difficult for a drone to mm-hmm. fly over a building okay. and Take pictures okay. and a system telling me whether this house is good quality or bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, or whether mm-hmm. by doing certain tests, I don't uh-huh. need a human being mm-hmm. to decide whether mm-hmm. this quality is a good quality or bad. But a human being deciding that, is that bad? It's not bad at all. <laughs> it's not bad at all. It's only that... Time consuming. No, no, there are three things. So first yeah. of all, it takes out the subjectivity. Mm-hmm. One human being versus another human being yeah. thinking whether something is good or bad. Yeah. It takes out a bit of the subjectivity. Mm-hmm. Second is time. Yeah. Third is resource. Cost. 
third is resource yeah. how many people do you need if you want to do like if, if i want to do like a 5 million homes mm-hmm. in parallel yeah. which is like all homes mm-hmm. in the country perhaps yeah. how many people will i employ to do yeah. that right so uh, ai and ml are not replacements to people mm-hmm. they are enabling people to do much more than they were doing okay yeah? mm-hmm. so so that is the kind of trends that uh, that we need yeah. to very very seriously focus on going for and okay. as brick and bolt i mean mm-hmm. what do we do we 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 make Enable, trends we yeah. make trends and what you do uh, during your free time how do you find that uh, balance between work and life sure so, sure so <clears throat> i'm a very big movie buff so mm-hmm. i i watch a lot of movies through the week at least like maybe three movies a week at least oh, okay. <laughs> whether it's a, it's a bengali movie or mm-hmm. an english movie or even regional cinema like mm-hmm. you know tamil uh, karana malayalam mm-hmm. so whatever i can get my hands okay. on so apart from that i have had a habit of reading quite a bit so okay. uh, you're an avid reader Uh, not that much anymore but uh, now i've switched to audio books because okay. you know the driving time is bang you should read my book sure why not? <laughs> <laughs> i i i do a, i mean bangalore allows you a lot of time in traffic so yeah. <laughs> which is a very big okay. boon for you know audio books so you listen to i listen books. to a lot of okay. audio books uh, all the time all the time oh right so you know whether it's a ken follow it or, mm-hmm. or a hillary mantel mm-hmm. or, or any any of these big big books you know okay. 24 hours of of uh, <laughs> listening <laughs> listening mm-hmm. so i like that and uh, Apart from that, I I am into long distance running, so I I love uh, you know just heading out uh, long distance. So I'll I'll go to Lal Bagh okay. every Saturday morning. And, okay. And do a fifteen kilometer. Mm-hmm. And, you know. So that is the end of our podcast, Sumit. Uh, thank you for spending time with us. It was lovely having you here. Thank you, Kafila. It was a pleasure for me as well. I mean, interacting with you through various. parts of the journey of my life and my uh, passions so thank you very much for letting me have a chat with you all right thank you so much